It is now time for member statements. I recognize the member for Sarnia Lambton. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you, Speaker. And, uh, it's, it's an honour to rise today to share with the Ontario Legislature exciting news from Sarnia Lambton once more. Mr. Speaker, as you know, one of the top priorities of the Ford government is promoting the exciting and lucrative career opportunities that await people <coughs> who enter the skilled trades in Ontario. Across the province, many different stakeholders are working to help the province meet its skilled trades needs today and into the future, led by the Minister of Labour, Skilled Trades Training and Immigration and Development. That is why I am extremely proud to share with the House that recently the Economic Developers Council of Ontario recognized the Sarnia Lambton Economic Partnership and their innovative Sarnia Lambton Apprentice Job Match Tool as the winner of the 2022 Award of Excellence for the Best Workforce Development and Resident Attraction uh, Initiative in the province. Through the Job Match Tool, apprentices and employers in Sarnia Lambton have a simple and effective way to connect and match skills with, with needs. This means that apprentices are finding work opportunities quickly and employers are successfully meeting their ongoing labour needs. Mr. Speaker, our government believes that when you have a career in the skilled trades, you have a career for life. I'd like to congratulate the Sarnia Lambton Economic Partnership for receiving such an exciting award and thank them for helping new apprentices kickstart their exciting career journey. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member's statements. The member for Toronto Centre. Thank you very much, Speaker, and good morning. Um, I rise today with a heavy heart. I'd like to commemorate two incredible women from Toronto Centre communities that are missing now. We lost Barbara Helen Castledean in late 2022. Barbara was a mother, a Regent Park resident, and a caring advocate for everyone in our communities. She made a mark everywhere she went. She brought shoes to the 215 Children's Memorial right here at Queen's Park. She successfully campaigned to change dangerous intersections in our city. She advocated for her fellow Toronto community housing residents and helped homeless people across our city. We are joined by her partner, Miguel Avila Alverde, today, who is here in the gallery. Earlier this year, we also lost Sandra Trey Hub, a pioneer in the psychology of music. As quoted in the New York Times article summarizing her life's work, every bit of research in the psychology of music over the last 40 years can be traced back to Sandra Trey Hub. She was a former neighbor of mine. She was loved, loved locally in her work um, building up St. Jamestown Community Arts. Forever giving, when she was 80 years old, she joined their board and increased their fundraising capacity, and she was able to hone all of that grant writing skills that she earned in academia to build that support. Over the next 10 years, she built St. James, Jamestown Community Arts programming and reached thousands of students. She will be forever missed. We will recognize her contributions and that of Barbara forever. Thank you very much. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Whitby. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As legendary Hockey Night in Canada broadcaster Foster Hewitt greeted listeners back in the day with the iconic introduction, Hello, Canada and hockey fans of the United States and Newfoundland. It gives me great pleasure today to address the members of this legislature and recognize the outstanding accomplishments of minor hockey associations in my riding of Durham. Recently, Mr. Speaker, I had the opportunity to participate in the opening festivities and the ceremonial puck drop as Clarington welcomed 56 teams from across Ontario to the first annual Josh Bailey Classic Tournament. This tournament showcased many young future stars in minor hockey from six different age levels and included a video greeting from the New York Islanders captain, Josh Bailey, and also a visit from three-time Stanley Cup champion, Orono's own Brian Bickle. From the Ontario University Athletics Association, I would like to congratulate both the men's and women's Ontario Tech University Ridgebacks teams as they advanced to postseason play in the first round of the OUA playoffs. And a 31-4-2 record with the Clarington Eagles Junior C team means that they have their sights set on the playoffs again this year. And finally, I mark the celebration of the 50th anniversary of Clarington Minor Hockey Association and the 75th anniversary of the Oshawa Community Hockey League. 
We are proud that Durham is hockey town, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member statements. Next, we have the member for London Fanshawe. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, for as long as I have represented my constituents of London Fanshawe, there has been a doctor shortage in my community. For over a decade, I have seen constituents struggle to find a family doctor in the fifth largest city in Ontario. I'm sure you can imagine what it's been like for people living in rural, northern, and other small communities. The past few years have taken us past the crisis point. On February 25th, the Ontario College of Family Physicians says more than 65,000 people in Middlesex, London, are without a family doctor. On the provincial level, 2.2 million Ontarians have been left without a family doctor, a significant increase from the previously reported 1.8 million in 2020. Worse, there was a 66 per cent increase in children and teens who do not have a family doctor between 2020 and 22. These numbers are hard to comprehend. When I speak to women on ODSP who cannot get care, or a man who's been waiting years for a family doctor, I share their pain and I share their helplessness. But this government can take action. They can commit to real changes to help people to address this crisis, like expediting recognition of credentials for thousands of international educated nurses and doctors, and repeal Bill 124. I challenge this government to heed the calls of medical professionals and the 2.2 million people who need care and take action action on this doctor shortage immediately. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Markham Unionville. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, it is great to be back at Queen's Park after an eventful winter break. I appreciate this time today to share my engagement with my constituents during the holidays. In December, I had a meet and greet event at Warfield Mall one of the most popular shopping malls in Markham Unionville. It was wonderful seeing shoppers buzzing around the mall, signaling a recovery of Ontario's economy. For the first time this Christmas, my team and I visited hundreds of homes in Markham Unionville for nominations of the Griswold Award. 120 awards were presented to different homes to recognize their generosity to bring joy to our community. On New Year's Eve, I took part in a spectacular fireworks countdown event in downtown Markham. Okay. And less than a month later, it was Lunar New Year, which was one of the largest celebrations for the Chinese, Vietnamese, and Korean communities in Canada. To celebrate this great festival, my office organized two meet and greet events in Markham Unionville. My team and I gave up souvenirs and rare packets to our friends, neighbors, and constituents. I warmed my heart with seeing families gathered and embrace Asian traditions. I also had the pleasure to attend more some other celebrations events across Ontario. We celebrate the many contributions that the Canadians of Chinese descent has made a Canada made to Canada for generations. As we reminisce about the joyful times we had during these celebrations, let's look to the future with hope and confidence. Thank you, Speaker. Here, here. Thank you very much. Member statements. Member for Ottawa Centre. Thank you, Speaker. Four days ago, you could hear the sound of hearts breaking across Ottawa. Why? Because the Rideau Canal Gateway was officially closed for the winter season. That was a tough loss for us. The National Capital Commission made the call because they said the ice wasn't thick enough. It was a big loss for local tourism, small business, and residents of our city. But to be honest, Speaker, in my opinion, it is yet another reminder that Ontario is not doing enough to meet the imminent threat of the climate emergency we're living in. Ottawa has been tested by extreme weather events time and again the last five years, and this government has done next to nothing about it. Two once-in-a-century floods, two dramatic windstorms, millions of dollars of damage. Speaker, it's time for Ontario to be part of the solution, not the pollution. The great Neil Young, one of the best songwriters to ever come out of this country, is challenging us to ask in a recent song, who is going to stand up to save the earth? Who is going to say that she's had enough? That, Speaker, has got to be us. It's got to be the people of Ontario. And we have an opportunity this Friday to be part of a global movement, the Fridays for Future movement. On March 3rd, join me and other people of conscience at 90 Elgin Street outside the Department of Finance, where we ask the federal government to stop 
subsidizing through tax expenditures fossil fuel growth in this country. We have to stand up and save the earth. Ottawa, I will see you on the street this Friday at noon. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Halliburton, Corth Lakes, Brock. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Our government continues to invest in our health care system. Recently, I was happy to announce much-needed health care investments in my riding of Halliburton, Kawartha Lakes, Brock. The City of Kawartha Lakes Family Health Team will receive funding to support the residents by adding two new nurse practitioners to enhance and support and deliver high-quality primary health care in Kawartha Lakes. Mr. Speaker, I would like to take the opportunity to thank the team of the City of Kawartha Lakes Family Health Team for their tireless work in taking care of our community. In addition, over a million dollars in funding support will add two new mobile wellness clinics. The Canadian Mental Health Association, Halliburton, Kawartha and Pine Ridge, will uh, run these two mobile wellness clinics, and they'll be able to service on-the-go health care to our rural communities that need the most. These communities in my riding will now have greater access to counselling and therapy, addiction support and substance use, mental health education, medical support, and access to other psychiatry services. And I know, Mr. Speaker, in parts of Halliburton County, they've already uh, had over 80 visits that have taken place. It's a great success. But this initiative underlines the government's commitment towards promoting high-quality health care for the people in Ontario. And I want to thank the Deputy Premier and Minister of Health and the Associate, Associate Minister of Mental Health and Addictions for listening and addressing the concerns in Halliburton Court, the Lakes Brock. And I know it's just one step forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Beaches, East York. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and good morning. Beautiful day, everyone. In the heart of Crescent Town resides Health Access Taylor Massey, a healthcare centre oriented around community and social services. It's actually an amazing healthcare model for all of Ontario. They are a crucial part of the East Toronto Health Partners, who are responsible for providing quality care and resources to the 300,000 people living in East Toronto communities, including my riding, of beautiful beaches East York. Health Access Taylor Massey has helped 75,000 clients in an underserved community, and addressing health inequities that have only become more prevalent with the COVID-19 pandemic. Their extraordinary services include family doctor appointments, vaccines, prenatal care, uh, pap tests, cancer test referrals, and COVID testing and treatment. The strain on our health care system is evident with each passing day, with inconsistent wait times and long backlogs for medical services. Our health care system needs some, some more support to keep up the quality care provided for Ontarians. Neighbourhood-based care models like Health Access Taylor Massey help alleviate the burden of, for hospitals. This centre was developed with the dedication and hard work of many of our East Toronto health partners, including um, our ever-energetic Stephen Beckwith, and the input from the Taylor Massey Residence Wellness Council, where co community members were given the opportunity to share their opinions, to have a say in the building process, so led from the ground up. We must strive towards accessible health care that prioritizes specific needs, making it easier for residents to find specific care in one place closer to home. I regularly hear from many happy residents who utilize the valuable services of Health Access Taylor Massey. Thank you for the staff for keeping it running and keep up the great work and let's roll that model out right across Ontario. Thank you very much. Members' statements. Member for Flamborough, Glanbrook. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to take the time to tell you about an amazing woman in my riding of Flamborough Glanbrook who is making miracles happen. Her name is Jane Scala. Jane operates the Dairy Queen restaurant in Waterdown. She has been recognized by Dairy Queen Canada with the Dairy Queen 2022 Miracle Maker Award. She received the award last week for her tireless efforts and dedication to raising funds for McMaster Children's Hospital. Jane has gone above and beyond, particularly on DQ's Miracle Treat Day. That's the day that proceeds from the sale of frozen blizzard treats sold at DQ restaurants benefit the Children's Miracle Network. 
Jane has donated 100 per cent of her sales of Blizzard treats to McMaster Children's Hospital. To date, she has raised nearly $148,000 for the hospital. Jane was able to reach that goal in part because of the support she has received from customers in Oakville, Cambridge and Brantford who drive to her store because they know the proceeds are going directly to McMaster Children's Hospital. Jane has a special place in her heart for the staff at Mac Kids. Whenever her daughter Amelia was five years old, she received life-saving treatment for pediatric cancer at Mac Kids. The funds raised by Jane Scala support the Pediatric Oncology Unit, the Child Life Program, and the Neonatal Intensive Care Unit. Jane gives credit to her staff and customers, but she is the driving force behind the incredible fundraising effort. Congratulations and a heartfelt thank you, Jane. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Thornhill. There's nobody on the other side. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As we complete Black History Month, I would like to shine a light on a special person and organization. Today in the House, I'm happy to welcome the president of the Thornhill African Caribbean Canadian Association, Mr. Vernon Hendrickson, and his colleague, LaSalle Campbell. Vernon, a longtime resident, is the founding member of the Thornhill African Caribbean Canadian Association, also known as TACA a not-for-profit, multicultural organization with members from diverse backgrounds and ethnicities from all over Canada and the Caribbean. In operation since 2005, they offer support programs and scholarships to our extended community. And one of the highlights of their meaningful work includes the talented, and mellifluous and melodic sounds of the Taka Steel Drum Band. When I asked, Vernon about his inspiration, he talked about a little boy who fundraised for his school. The school needed improvements, and this boy jumped on his bike and he stopped to collect money from the business people of Nevis, riding on his bike and going door to door to make a difference. That little boy later traveled to Canada from Nevis, worked in studies, and then went back to give back to his community in forming TACA. And in 2002, that little boy, now an adult, was awarded the Queen's Jubilee Medal for his meaningful and significant contributions to his community. Mr. Speaker, I do not think I need to tell you that that little boy on the bicycle is Vernon, and I do not believe that Vernon's attitude or work ethic has changed since that little boy jumped on his bike to help his community. I hope everyone in the House celebrates this last day of Black History Month by getting to know Vernon Hendrickson and his tireless commitment to the people of Thornhill. And I encourage everyone to continue to appreciate the positive impacts Black Canadians have made for our economy, society, and within our government, not just this month, but every month. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I feel compelled to once again remind members that member statements are to be 90 seconds in duration.